Today, let's collect poison ivy. KP's Budget Collecting, and another episode of Let's Collect. Today, we're collecting Poison Ivy. And no, this isn't just an excuse to show up the recent addition to my collection. <laughs> um, thank you, Comic Books NYC. Kavi, I appreciate it. Um, this was actually a request um, from one of you, and I've gotten several requests like that. I'm going to try to work them in as quick as I can. Um, most of them so far have been for Batman characters, so I'm going to try not to just do Batman characters for a while, but try to mix them in. But I will definitely get to them, so if you have a request for a character you'd like to see, let me know, and I will try to get to it eventually. So, today we are talking about Poison Ivy. Um, she was first created in 1966, and uh, we'll get into her first appearance in a minute. But uh, when she was first created, she was actually, actually Dr. Lillian Rose. Uh, it wasn't until after post-crisis uh, in the 80s that she became Pamela Lillian Isley. Um, over the years, despite being around since mid-60s, she really hasn't had that many... She's been a little bit underutilized for one of the iconic um, Batman villains. But she definitely does have some good stories. She definitely has seen some uh, keys that you want to pick up if you're interested in the character, if you care about Poison Ivy. So without further ado... Let's get into those. Uh, we're going to talk about the big keys for Poison Ivy, uh, some f a few smaller ones. We'll talk about the key stories and the fun covers. So with that, let's get started. Uh, first up is Batman 181. Um, and this is uh, her first appearance. Uh, it occurred, as I said before, it occurred in 1966. Um, I'm going to put this here back on the shelf behind me. Hopefully I won't pull a Kenny while I do this. I did not pull an 84. Thank you. Um, so, pop the image up now. <laughs> um, so, uh, her first appearance was, like I said, 1966. Uh, this book uh, has a couple things about it you need to know. Uh, first of all, it had a kind of centerfold in it, which was like a poster of Batman and Robin. So you want to make sure if you're hunting for this book that you get one with the centerfold. Um, without the centerfold, basically, in any grade, cuts the value in half. Um, so it's kind of like one of those Marvel value stats. You want to make sure that they haven't pulled that centerfold out. Um, I'll pop up the picture of the centerfold right here. So you want to make sure that's in there. Um, but a complete book of this in uh, a 7.0 will run you about $1,000 which for first appearance of a Silver Age character is still pretty affordable. Um, a 5.0 is going to run you in the neighborhood of 500. Uh, raw books uh, with the poster, uh, depending on grade, are going to run you around 100 plus. Uh, and just the higher the grade, the more above $100 it'll be. Um, without the poster, you're starting at about 50 plus. And again, like I said, it usually cuts the value about in half. Uh, to not have that um, poster in the, in the center. Um, if you are a big Poison Ivy fan, and this is just not a book that you could really afford um, right now, DC did recently put out a facsimile edition uh, just this fall um, that is basically the same book. It does say $3.99, so you need to make sure if you're trying to buy the original that it does say $3.99, because <laughs> um, that's really about the only difference in the books. But... Um, so, if you just want to get your hands on a copy of it, read that original story, this is probably an excellent option until you can swing that bigger book. Um, next, at number two on our key Poison Ivy books is her second appearance, which is Batman 183. Um, there aren't a lot of slots, so I was looking at what the value on this one is, and the value on this one is quite a bit lower. There's not even a lot of slabs on the census or out there. Um... A 9.2 of this will only cost you between three and four hundred dollars. Um, an 8.0 will cost you around 150, maybe 200 ish. 
and raw copies you can get for ten to thirty dollars. Um, so this is a book uh, for a second appearance, extremely affordable, and definitely maybe a route you want to go until you can get to that um, bigger uh, one eighty one. Um, our third kind of key book is super affordable, and this is Secret Origins number thirty six. And this is her post-crisis origin, where she becomes uh, Pamela, Pamela Lillian Isley that we know and love today. Um, this was written by Neil Gaiman in 1986. And this is basically, I don't even have slab prices on this one because there are basically none out there. Um, for a raw book, this is only going to cost you 5 to $10. Um, so super easy book to get her modern origin um, if you're wanting to collect Poison Ivy. So... Um, Next, uh, our fourth kind of big key is Poison Ivy, Cycle of Life and Death from 2016. And this is her first and so far only solo title uh, series or mini series in her history. So she's had some like one shots and stuff that were like that we'll get into later, but where she wasn't the only character on the lead. Um, this is her first and only kind of solo uh, series. Um, this is, like I said, from 2016. Uh, number one, uh, there were two covers. There was a main, which you see now. Um, this cover will cost you between five and ten and fifteen dollars. Um, so just barely above cover price for this one. Um, and there was also a one in twenty-five Dodson variant um, that I'm going to pop up now. Um, this is a little tougher to get. Uh, raw copies of this are going to cost you thirty-ish, probably is really where they're at right now. Um, a 9.8 is going to be 100 to 120-ish kind of thing. Um, so that Dodson variant, just because it's a 1 in 25, not a high print run book. A little tougher to get, but um, those are your two covers for Poison Ivy, uh, Cycle of Life and Death number one. Her first ever and so far only um, kind of solo titled series. Uh, number five is Gotham City Sirens number one. And... So my copy of that, um, this is from 2009, uh, and this was a run with Harley, Ivy, and Catwoman, um, the three of them. This was kind of a big series. This was a relatively low print. Almost all the books, though, in the series are going to cost you at least $10 to $20 um, to get almost any issue of the series. Um, this number one is going to cost you around 40 ish for a raw copy, 9.8 run, 150 ish to a little plus. Um, there are actually three versions of this number one. Um, there is obviously the version I just showed you. There is a red version of that cover that, um, is the second print. And then there is a B cover that was a one in 25, uh, JG Jones cover. Um, so price wise, the second print is basically the same value as the main. Um, it is going to run you really similar prices for raw copies a little more on the slabs but not much um kind of still in that 150 200 range uh raws of 40 ish a little more um the b cover is super expensive <laughs> um and it's hard to get hard to find um raw copies you're looking at 250 dollars plus for a raw copy of this b cover and 9.8s are going for seven to eight hundred dollars um, so that's kind of her second most valuable book, really. Uh, maybe you could put it, uh, 183 is probably still slightly more valuable when you get in that super high grade. But yeah, it's uh, it's right there. Um, so that, let's move into five, kind of our secondary keys. Um, first up is World's Finest, number 252. And this is her original origin story. Um, and this was part of a two-parter with, uh, world also in World's Finest 251. And she's actually battling Wonder Woman in this story. Uh, her origin occurs in 252. Um, these are both basically 10 to $20 books. Um, so you can get either one of them. It's far, but, uh, this is her original origin. So if you want to get that, that is definitely a fun book to get. Uh, number seven is Joker's Asylum, uh, Poison Ivy number one. And this is kind of an updated, uh, modern, uh, a slight update on her origin, um, told via the Joker. <laughs> if you've read any of these series, uh, he is the narrator for all of these. So you'll see how your guess is how trustworthy he is. Um, and this is another kind of five to $10 book. Um, our eighth 
kind of key book is Batman Poison Ivy uh, from 1997, uh, the same year that that uh, terrible Batman and Robin movie came out that she appeared in. Um, this was a one-shot and kind of um, not really an origin, but just kind of her a cool one-shot, kind of the first time that she had a book really dedicated just to her, um, and that's a 5 to $15 book. Um, next, at number nine on the list, uh, is we're getting into kind of scraping the find some Poison Ivy keys, I guess. Uh, she doesn't have a lot of really big keys, um, but one of the teams she did join is, this is Birds of Prey number three from the New 52. And this is when she joins, uh, officially joins the Birds of Prey for this series. So she was a member of the Birds of Prey for a while, uh, and that started with issue number three. Um, and number, our tenth book is Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy, number one. And this is the new series that just came out. Um, it's kind of the first time that DC's really kind of promoting them as a, a combined series. This is a mini series. Um, and uh, so this is a new book. Um, put it on the list because it is a kind of a number one. It is a title with just her and Harley. Um, so she's only she's only had the one solo title. This is maybe as close as we're going to get for a while. But um, this is Harley and Ivy, um, number one. Um, next at uh, number 11 on the list are... So we had 10 kind of bigger keys. Now five kind of fun keys that you might want to get into is Batman, Harley and Ivy, number one. And this is kind of an animated verse um, story, but it's also kind of the first time they're actually titled together on the title. Um, this one is, those last couple books I talked about, Birds of Prey and Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy, number one, are still cover price books. Um, this uh, Batman, Harley and Ivy, uh, this is a 10 to $20 book raw. Uh, with a 9.8 running around 100. Um, and like I said, it's just kind of the first time that they kind of shared the the top line on a comic. Um, Detective Comics 23.1. Uh, this is kind of her new 52 origin. So I've had a bunch of origins in here. They've kind of tweaked it. It really still is very similar to that uh, Secret Origins uh, 36 from post-crisis, but they've tweaked it a little bit as they updated, and this was the New 52 update. Um, that Joker one actually came before the New 52. Um, and this is a cover price book all, all day. Uh, the last three are a little bit more of that Harley and Ivy kind of thing. Um, first is DC Bombshells number 27. Um, if you collected this digitally, it's actually 79, but because they did like three-ish three little mini episodes digitally that combine into one comic um, if you buy the hardcover. So it's 27 on an actual physical copy. Um, it's a five to $15 book. And this is the first time Harley and Ivy kiss in comic books. Um, so this is their first where they're really a couple. Um, so that happened in DC Bombshells number 27. Uh, Gotham City Sirens number 25. Um, this is the first time kind of in DC continuity that Ivy actually expresses that she loves Harley. Um, and this is a 15 to $25 book, which is not really because of what happens in it. That's where almost all of these bombshells or these, uh, Gotham City Sirens books run. So, um, that is Gotham City Sirens number 25. And finally, we have Harley Quinn number 25 from Rebirth. And this is the... First time they kiss in the main DC comic verse. So the first time they're really like acknowledged as an actual couple. Um, I, they danced around it for years, but this is kind of the first really obvious. Yes, they are. Um, so with that, those are our 15 kind of key Poison Ivy books. Um, now let's get into the storylines. So the interesting thing about Ivy is many of her stories are not collected into trades in a traditional sense. There's not like a trade to get a whole story. There's a few, but for the most part, there's not. Um, lots of them are collections of other stories. <laughs> so the first one is just that, um, and probably the most essential, and that is Batman uh, Arkham Poison Ivy. Um, it has that Joker's Asylum cover, same as that cover as that Joker's Asylum uh, Poison Ivy. Um, and so Batman I Arkham Poison Ivy Collection, sorry, um, and it collects 
181, a collect uh, storyline uh, called Hot House, um, which is kind of a two issue story arc. Um, it collects that tech 23.1 we just talked about, um, that Joker's Asylum book, um, The Secret Origins 36 is in there. Those two world's finest stories are in there, as well as a couple other things. So there's just a collection of various stor Ivy stories from across um, the years, all in this one book. So definitely, if you're looking for a trade, this is where to start. Um, our second uh, storyline kind of edition is this Harley and Ivy Deluxe Edition. And this collects a bunch of these animated verse stories that they did. It collects that Batman, Harley, and Ivy 1 through 3, which we talked about number 1 a minute ago. Um, it collects the Batman Adventures Holiday Special, um, which is another great story. And several of these that were in these two collections would have made my list had they not been part of this collection. A couple of them still do, just because they're that important. But um, like that Holiday Special would have been on my list, but it's not because it's in this other book. Um, so, other things to read Poison Ivy-wise um, that aren't necessarily all trades. Um, first is that Secret Origins number 36. Um, Pavan is the story. And it's only one of the stories in Secret Origins, but it's just uh, the key kind of introduction to her history, her background that uh, you need to collect. Um, next is Detective Comics 751 and 752. Um, and... That is a storyline called A Walk in a Park. This is kind of post um, Batman No Man's Land. And basically, as they're trying to recover from the earthquake stuff and they're starting to open up the city, Ivy has taken a whole bunch of orphans into Gotham Park where she's been protecting them. Um, now the people are coming back to like, oh, get the protect the orphans from Ivy, which is not really necessary. It's just a really good story. Um, and definitely this two-parter is something you will want to read. Um, if you're an Ivy fan, as far as I know, it's never really been collected in anything, um, that I could find. So you'll probably have to try to hunt down those two issues, Detective Comics 751 and Detective Comics 752. Um, next is Batman Poison Ivy, uh, that 1997 one shot, um, just a really good story. Um, and like I said, her kind of her first solo story, um, Next story we're going to talk about is Batgirl Annual Number Two, and this is a just a super fun uh, Batgirl and Ivy story from the New Fifty Two version of Ivy. Um, if you have interest in these two characters, it's a, they really play off of each other well in this story. Definitely, it's another kind of single issue that you can grab, um, and it's a cover price issue. So if you're interested, that's a fun one as well. Um, our seventh kind of list, is, seventh book or storyline to read is Gotham City Sirens, book one. And really, if you like book one, you should grab book two. The whole series is just split those two issues. This one collects uh, one through 13. Um, it is a Paul Dini storyline. It's the writer. Gillian March is the artist on this. So great writing, great art. Um, just a fun story with these three characters. Um, next is Go Batman Gotham Knights. Uh, 61 through 65, uh, Human Nature. And as far as I can tell, um, these have never been collected into a trade of any kind. Um, I couldn't find one that listed that had collected these. Um, these are, these five stories. This is a really good story. Um, I would highly recommend this one. Um, so if you get a chance, you should grab that. Uh, issues are cheap, easy to get. They're, you know, cover price basically find them in dollar bin kind of things. But um, Batman Gotham Knights, 61 through 65, um, Human Nature is a good one. Uh, next, we have kind of another single issue story I want to put up here. This is from Catwoman uh, 57 uh, from the 90s, from that No Man's Land, what was this cataclysm, the lead up to No Man's Land. And this is a story between uh, Ivy and Selena. I guess I'll hold it up so you guys can continue to see it. Uh, and basically, Ivy's trying to use the earthquake as an opportunity to set Gotham back. Uh, you know, even if it means the, the death of a lot of people, um, she believes it's a, her chance to really, like, bring nature, put nature back in charge. Uh, Selena ends up stopping her, but it's it's just a really good into this version of Ivy and what her psyche is. It's a good story. And another single one-shot. Uh, finally... 
Uh, number 10 of our stories is Poison Ivy, Cycle of Life and Death. Um, this is, she's kind of given up her villainous ways. Uh, as I said before, this is her only ever solo title. Um, she's actually looking, went back to being a researcher and a doctor looking for ways to um, protect humanity and everything else and nature at the same time. She actually has a bunch of kids that she basically grows that are like her half plant, half human. Um, it's an interesting story that uh, makes our list. And then finally, um, an honorable mention, and that is just the DC Bomb Sales series that we talked about before. That's kind of an Elseworlds set during World War II version of the DC Universe. Um, it doesn't make our list because it bounces around between basically all the female characters in the DC Universe. Um, but it, Harley and Ivy do play a significant role in the story at different, as, at different times. Um, volume 5 is the one that centers the most probably around their relationship. But really, if you just start it with Volume 1, if you like the, what you read, um, go from there. They make appearances throughout. So that is kind of an honorable mention, just another place to get Ivy stories. Um, so with that, let's move into the cool covers or favorite covers. Um, this time, I did manage to avoid uh, keys and that kind of stuff with my cover list. Um, lots of different artists. There's actually not as many, like, great Ivy covers as you would think if you don't just focus completely on modern. Um, there's been a lot of stuff recently, but I tried to mix it up. Um, so with that, let's get started. Um, and number 10 on my cool covers, and these aren't necessarily in order, um, is Harley Quinn number 23 from Rebirth. And this is a very recent cover, just the last couple years. And this is a Frank Cho cover. Uh, I just think this is a really fun cover. I'm not a huge fan of Frank Cho, but I do like a, like his art enough. And like something like this, I think it's really like in his wheelhouse. Um, this is a cover price book. So if you're looking for a fun Harley and Ivy cover, I don't know that they get any more fun than this one. Um, so that is our first book on our covers list. Next is Harley, and, Harley Quinn number 30 uh, from the New 52. And this is a 1 in 25 Amanda Connor cover. So this is the variant. And just another kind of fun Harley and Ivy cover as Ivy's frowning out, kind of really lays out the relationship. Ivy's carving, Ivy, uh, Harley is carving in the tree and Ivy's like, what are you doing? So just kind of a fun cover uh, that I really like. Um, there's several of these Amanda Connor covers that I could have put. There's a bunch of Harley and Ivy covers throughout Amanda Connor's multiple runs on Harley. Um, this is my favorite. This is because it's a 125, it's a little tougher to get. There's not a lot of them out there. It's a little bit hard to find. It's going to run you probably about 30 bucks um, to track it down, but it is kind of a fun and cool cover. Uh, next is Birds of Prey number 11. Um, and this is an art germ cover from a New 52 run of Birds of Prey. And this is just Ivy being a badass. <laughs> so um, I really like this cover. She's kind of taking out the rest of the Birds of Prey. Um, this is a cover price book as well. So if you like our germ, you like Ivy, this is one to grab. Uh, next is, I'm going to cheat a little bit. Um, the, there's several covers on the Gotham City Sirens uh, run by Gillian Marks that I could have put in here. I'm cheating and putting two into one spot on my list of 10, um, and that is cover number six, uh, which is part of a five, six, and seven kind of uh, connecting cover with Harley, Ivy, and Catwoman, where they're all kind of similar in this design. So this is the centerpiece of that, just a gorgeous Ivy cover. Um, and it's a little more, it's a, you know, $15, $20 book um, to try to track down, which is about like almost all those Gotham City Sirens books. And then number eight is the other Gotham City Sirens one I put in here. This, I just think both of these are just gorgeous. I love this one. I couldn't decide between the two of them. Um, there's a bunch of others that are attractive where she's kind of with the other two, but these are the two that are most focused on her. So these are the two I went with. Um, next is uh, a Cliff Chang um, cover from... Batman Gotham Knights, number 65, and that's part of that 
Human Nature storyline I talked about before. Several of these covers are also very nice. This is my favorite of the group. Um, it's also a cover price book, easily had. Um, so that is on my list of cool covers. Uh, and number five on my list of cool covers, and again, these aren't really in order, um, is Batman 609, uh, famous Jim Lee uh, cover of Batman, Ivy, and Catwoman. Um, just a kind of a classic, somewhat iconic cover at this point, I feel like. Um, she's not really the focus on this one, but it's Jim Lee and this whole Hush art arc. The, the artwork on her in this is great. The story is... Well, not as good as I remember, but still pretty good. Um, now, this one's a little tougher because it's also the first appearance of Hush, uh, the the villain. So, this is going to be a $20 to $30 book raw. Uh, 9.8 are going to run you like 75 to 100 but not too bad, but just a little more than uh, most of the other covers on this list. Uh, and number three, uh, four on my list is... Harley Quinn number three, and this is a Terry Dodson cover. Um, there's several Dodson covers, kind of like uh, some of these other artists that, where he's done Ivy that I could have choose from. I debated long and hard with this one or that uh, one in 25 from uh, Poison Ivy Cycle of Life and Death number one, that one in 25 I showed earlier. Um, I chose this one because a couple things. A, it's a little more fun, and B, this is the first time these three characters appeared on a cover together. So that is why I went with this one. But there's several Dodson covers of Poison Ivy that you might want to grab um, that are a lot of fun. Next uh, is Batman Gotham Knights number 15. And this is a Bolin cover. Um, just a cool 90s Ivy um, cover, in my opinion. And this is a 5 to $10 book. So really easily attainable. Um, and number two on our list is that DC Bombshells number 27 um, cover of Harley and Ivy. We've talked about this book a couple of times. We've talked about that series. Um, this is a $5 to $15 book. Um, just a cool cover, um, a fun cover with these two characters. Now, so I already cheated once and had two covers in one spot. Um, and then now I have two honorable mentions. Um, first of my honorable mentions is Batman the Long Halloween number six. I'll be honest, this is not one of my favorite Ivy covers. I put it on the list because I feel like it's somewhat iconic. Um, it's a cover that people talk about um, from that Long Halloween series, which is a super cool cover, or super cool series and story arc. Um, and this is one of the more famous covers in that run. But um, So I felt like putting it on the honorable mentions list if you want to collect Ivy covers. And then as a bonus for me... Um, a relatively new book. Uh, this is Harley and Ivy meet uh, Betty and Veronica. So this is my other kind of honorable mentions bonus books. Um, number one, and the best, the, why is this on here? It's not, you're probably like, that's not that great of a cover. I mean, it's good, but as far as I can tell, it's the only time that Adam Hughes has done Poison Ivy on a cover. And so it made my list just because of that. So um, that's kind of my, that's why I made my honorable lunch, mentions list. No. So sorry for the cut, but uh, after I got done recording this, I realized I had left a cover of Poison Ivy off that I definitely would have put in my top 10. And I decided I was just going to go on and add it. And that is Gotham Girls number two. Um, this is a, I think there's what, five parts of this and some excellent covers. Um, that fun Batman the Animated Series uh, art style. So this one would definitely have been in my top 10. I just forgot about it. So I'm adding it to the list. Um, with that, we'll get back to the rest of the list. Bye. Now, I said my covers weren't in order. Um, and they weren't completely in order. But my number one uh, Poison Ivy cover uh, is my number one. The last one is my number one cover. You've been looking at it this whole time. Uh, this is Batman number 26 from Rebirth, uh, the Josh Middleton uh, B cover of Poison Ivy. This is just, I just love this cover. Um, to me, this is my absolute favorite Poison Ivy cover of all time. Um, this is a relatively easy book to get. Again, it's a 5 to $10 book. Um, so this is my number one choice for a Poison Ivy cover. Might not be yours. 
So with that, that is our breakdown of Poison Ivy. I hope you found some cool stories that you might want to read, um, some cool covers you might want to track down, and some keys that you're going to be on the hunt for. So I want to thank you guys for watching, and we'll catch you next time.